A violent murder shakes a small North Carolina community. A beloved mother of two is gunned down at her family's Mountain Lodge. At first, police guess it may have been a robbery, but the investigation that followed exposed a tangled web of deceit and a killer who left behind a crucial clue. Peter Van Sant has been tracking the investigation. My heart has been ripped out and it's laying in there dead with her. Vanessa Mintz, beloved by many in the small town of Hendersonville, North Carolina, was a woman known for her willingness to help others. Vanessa helped me with public speaking and building confidence. Dancer Heather Waldbart worked with Vanessa prepping for beauty pageants. She made me a very strong, independent woman. Come back and see us in the morning. Okay, we will. Vanessa's killing stunned this community, nestled in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. She'd been working the night shift at the family-owned lodge. The next morning, her daughter Jessica arrived to take over working the front desk. Special Agent Steve Maudlin. Jessica came in through the employee entrance into the main guest quarters here and immediately noticed her mother in the bed. I started calling her name. Mama! Mama, and there's no, there's no Sam. Jessica first thought her mother must be sick, so she called her sister Andrea, who's a nurse. And Andrea said, Jessica, is she breathing? And she just screamed, this blood curdling scream. Vanessa had been shot once in the face and once in the forearm area. At first, everyone, including prosecutor Alex Bass, thought it was a robbery since $200 was missing from the cash drawer. The big breakthrough for investigators was this shotgun shell the killer had left behind. It was the big piece of evidence. And this inexplicable murder case got even stranger when police zeroed in on a suspect who was an ex-cop and military veteran, Vanessa's husband, Travis McGraw. Travis McGraw had a lot of secrets he was not wanting to share. A whole nother life that he had. One that involved another woman Travis was secretly seeing. You gave Travis an ultimatum. You told him to choose. The next day, Vanessa is murdered. Did you think that was just a coincidence? It's so weird to say in my mind, I thought it was a coincidence. This was money and sex driven. And how disgusting is that to murder someone for? So I'm joined now by 48 Hours executive producer Susan Zarinsky to talk a little bit about this case. Here you have this small town. I'm sure everyone knows each other. How did the community react to this murder? Well, first of all, this was a beloved woman. She had, had been a help for women doing beauty pageants. Her daughters were really her, her advocates, and that's really how this case got solved. Mm -hmm a sweet town. They ran this wonderful little motel in the mountains, and it just yeah. rocked this town. You know, this is America. This is who cares about the elections. This really is about people who, who really are in the issues of our time, mm -hmm. and this rocked the community. Mm -hmm. uh, what was unraveled, though, was this crazy town. So here you are, small America, but what happens? It's deceit, it's lying, it's tangled webs that they created, and, and that's really what happens in this case. And this is an update, and it's kind of powerful. It, it almost sounds like the makings of a fictional novel, but this is, you know, their real life. And her husband, the victim's husband, is charged, and then as the investigation continues, you find out that he's having an affair. In truth, his, you know, people do themselves in. If you're smart, don't text. Or the joke at our office is, if you're smart and 48 hours calls, don't answer the phone. <laughs> don't say yes. Right. Um, but, you know, Travis, her husband, was a good guy. He was a former cop. He was a decorated military officer. And he begins to have another relationship. His texts did him in. And actually, the woman who he was having an affair with gave him an ultimatum. She said, you either have to leave your wife or I'm out. And the next Two day, within days, his wife was dead. When asked, do you feel responsible, she kind of really didn't, which was a curious turn of events. Mm -hmm. She was never charged, but she was the prosecution's key witness. Mm -hmm. 
Um, you know, we also have a nine o'clock show, and interestingly enough, in this case, it's the daughters who really are pushing. In the other case, it's about a young woman who disappears, and it's really about the father and mother. So you and and an amazing woman who was a cop and becomes the sheriff. They eventually find who they think was responsible for this death more than 20 years ago, and they still have not found the body. So that search is active and continuing until they come home. But it's always about the advocates. Whether you're talking about politics, whether you're talking about crimes, it's about the people who really have the sticky, sticky quality to their personalities. Will the candidates stick? Will these investigators stick? Yeah. It's really about that. Although I must say, in last night's debate, yes. I was kind of hoping that there might be a murder and I <laughs> might have a really interesting 48 hours. But the campaign is young. It's never can Yes. Go. Sorry to disappoint, Susan. Susan Zerinsky, thank you so much. A double header when it comes to 48 hours. You can catch Peter Van Sant's full report on uh, the ultimatum tomorrow at 10 p.m. Eastern. But before that, at 9 o'clock, tune in to see Tracy Smith's report on the lost daughter. That's all tomorrow night on CBS.